This is Ashley Warhol, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. And this is Rena from the band Silentium joining you again. And this is the man, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they also call me numb nuts. So here's right. a question. If I say, Oh, I'm the man, is that sexist? Um how? <laughs> <laughs> are are you the one that we're supposed to rebel against? Are you like referring to you as I'm the a house like- husband? <laughs> 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 Go ahead. I'm, I seriously am a house husband. I, I I left everything I have to support my wife's career. Does that make me? I can still be sexist, though. I guess. But my, I, I guess, my wife always but, says to me, "Oh, hey, Chris, I'm the man." <laughs> so I, you know. <laughs> anyway. I think that makes you a really, really good partner in life. So kudos on that, Chris. Oh, I don't know. I know. I, my wife and I have a great relationship. It's awesome. Yes, let's go for Ashley. Ashley. Yes, hello. Hey. Hi. Bruce Moore. So I have no video, but Bruce Moore here. This is my partner, Chris, and Reno all the way from Finland. Oh, Hi. oh wow. That's amazing. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thanks for joining us. Good, of course. Thank you for having me. Welcome to my, uh, well, work booth. <laughs> <laughs> here, I'll turn on my work booth. You don't want there his. We go. You don't want his. Video. Now I'm in my work booth. Now she's gonna oh, hang up. I'm I love here. It. Hey, it's just guitars no. and sound treatment. Come on. No, it's but awesome. the glare off the head is killing us. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> Come on. That's awesome. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for joining us. If you uh, if you could give people listening the two sentence boardroom pitch, what would you tell us about yourself? That I am a dreamer, and I would never be ashamed to say that. That's quite awesome. Okay. How does that relate to the music? Ever since I was a little girl, I pretty much knew that I was destined to do music. And I'm not sure if you guys know or not. I'm actually in, also in a rock band with my father. So Warhol is the actual band. And then I released to listen to the wind on my own just because it's a little bit more Celtic. It's similar style as Warhol, just a little not as heavy. So I grew up around music constantly. And seeing my dad, I knew that I wanted to have that as my dream to achieve music with him because he actually gave up his dream to support me and my mom. And so being able to kind of follow that dream with him and chase that dream and live that dream, it's it's full circle. That's awesome. Very cool. So what's the difference between what you do and what you do with your dad? So Warhol is technically classified as like symphonic rock or melodic metal. And my style is, of course, the same because my dad and I write the music for Warhol. But I would classify mine as more, obviously, instrumental-based music. So it's still symphonic, but it's more sound-based. You know, so you don't have the typical drums. You don't have the typical guitars. I use euphoric sounds as the background music, which is kind of what I did with Listen to the Wind to make you feel like you're kind of in a whole other world. You know, it's, it's more like film music, which is similar to Warhol too, because we compose for film. But when I write my own stuff, it's very film based. You compose for film? I do. Oh, wow. What film? Yeah. What films have you worked on? Um, So there's one that has won, um, Rosa Lee, it's a horror film, and Warhol's song, The Darkness, was actually featured in that film. They got uh, the Las Vegas uh, International Film Festival um, Best Horror Film. And then Listen to the Wind is actually going to be placed in another horror film called On Location, which is directed by Jeff Seaman. He's worked on a ton of major films. Um, I think he actually just finished the the recent wrong turn reboot oh, that they're wow. doing. Um, yeah. And then, uh, Felissa Rose from Sleepaway camp. She was a producer on it. So I'm actually doing the whole entire score for that film. So I'm super excited. 
And then I have uh, another one coming up next year uh, for The Love of My Daughter, which has some really like named actors in it. And I'm um, doing music and actually acting in that as well. But I can't give too much detail because they're still in contract and stuff. But uh, that one is Christopher Maggard is the director. So scoring, several things. Scoring for up. picture is really, really difficult. I love it, though. <laughs> yeah, I've, um, I love it. I, my, in my former life, I used to be a sound mixer. So oh, I, okay. I w- so like I would work on films, everything from American Mary to Wonder with Owen Wilson, and um, that's awesome. We um, I worked with an unbelievable composer named Peter Allen, mm-hmm. and watching what he had to do to pull off some of the like you have to chase picture cuts all the time, and it, it's yep. Hey Bruce, shut up. So. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear Bruce being loud in the background. No. <laughs> my, my mic was on mute the whole time, jackass. It's not. <laughs> but anyways, you know, he would have like a uh, digital performer for the MIDI and composition. Mm-hmm. He'd have Pro Tools slaved up to it recording. He had three Mac Pros. He had a bunch of PCs yep. all networked together, all just to kind of pull it together. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you running that kind of setup? I am. So I am doing all of the scoring, the composing, and then I'm working with a producer that we actually are using for the band. So I'll send him all of my files for him to mix and edit it for me. So I'm doing it more in the process of having the footage in front of me and kind of scoring to the footage, which a lot of people do that anyways. But I have, um, but I have certain tracks that they've already loved. So now it's just going to be finding where they fit. Oh, cool. So they cut to the music, which makes it easy. Right. Er. Yes. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting with Listen to the Wind, before I even had like a final draft or anything, I sent it to the director and he sent it to the wardrobe lady and she fell in love with it, that it made her change her design on that and made them change some of their scenes based off of the music. Um, so it's kind of a huge compliment, you know, when someone can really have a vision for for what you composed without even starting to film. <laughs> well, I noticed in the video, it's very cinematic. Yes. Yeah. Extremely I've always, thank you. Uh, Creepy Attic Productions, um, which is now M5 Agency with Christopher Magger, the director who did it. It's a very interesting story how we met, but uh, I've always wanted our music videos for the band, for myself to be more movie based because then you can submit them for film festivals, which is kind of what we're doing with this one. And the recent um, I'm not sure if you guys know either. My dad and I released Amazing Grace. We did a short film to it, and that's actually won a ton of awards, both nationally and internationally. Um, I know in Amsterdam, London, uh, we just won Best Short Drama. And uh, we also won Best Duo Acting, which was awesome because it was my dad's first time acting. So I was super proud of him. He played the priest. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then we won um, Best Original Score. So to win, those are kind of like huge things for us. So we were super excited for that. So I love cinematic. <laughs> yeah. how, how are you guys dealing with COVID right now? Oh, sorry, Rena. What? I'll let you go. <laughs> no, no, I just wanted to ask what, like, you know, in the video, and I and I loved it too. It was really nice, and I love all the stuff that you do with horror because I'm a huge horror fan myself. Yes, uh, yay for girls in horror. But yeah, <laughs> yes. what was that thing that sort of pulled you under? Then, what is there like a story behind that? For the listen to the wind, listen to the wind. Yes, with the, yes. With the black naily hands coming to right, like, right to the bottom. Um, which I don't know if you're about to ask COVID because it kind of goes hand in hand. So about maybe two or three years ago, I had my first anxiety attack and I've never dealt with anxiety in my life before. I'm a very go, go, go kind of person. So if I have like five minutes, I don't even know what to do with myself. (laughs) Um, And so that anxiety attack led me to thinking that I actually had heart issues because I felt the numbness in the left arm, my whole face went numb, um, my tongue went numb, I thought I was having a stroke. And so when I went to my primary care physician, she explains that it's anxiety. And so everyone feels things differently. And once COVID, yeah, and so once COVID happened... In January, I started having more anxiety attacks, and they were kind of out of control, and so I used music, which is my love and how I heal, to try and heal myself, 
So every time I would have an attack, I would go to the piano and I would play chords, melodies, trying to see if anything would physically make me feel better. And that's how I wrote Listen to the Wind. And so Listen to the Wind is my hope to be able to help other people kind of heal and calm their emotions whenever they're having an attack. And nature to me is my Zen go-to place for when I want to relax. So ironically, even though it's my own song, when I have an attack, I listen to my own song (laughs) and it helps. Um, So in art form, when I talked to Christopher about this video, I knew I wanted to touch on the vulnerability of what it looks like for me. So I wanted to show the darkness of the cold feeling, the numbness that you can feel, the heart, the heart racing. Um, But I wanted to show the other side, the beautiful side of how nature is so calming and Zen and just being able to escape to another world. And so while we were on set, Um, during those scenes where it was the cold blue kind of background with the dark hands, the hands represent anxiety, like you're choking. Uh, Well, instead, I allowed myself to have an attack. It was the first time I've done that in front of people outside of family who knows that about me. And it's kind of one of those moments where this is the moment you, you do it or you don't. (laughs) And, um, I let it out with a scream, the camera um, started, the music started, the rain fell on me, and I just allowed myself to, whatever happened, happened. And I was actually supposed to sing along with the track, which some takes we got, uh, and then as soon as everything was happening, I realized I couldn't sing, but that was okay, because that was a true form of what everything looked like, and I wanted Christopher to capture that, and he did. So the black hands, the coldness side, that's literally what anxiety and art form is to me. Right. That was a really good answer. And and I suffer from the same issue, but for a long time already, but I remember my first one and it certainly does feel like you're about to drop dead. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like you're dying. (laughs) Absolutely. But this is it. You're done. This is it. This was your life. So I can, I can relate to everything you said. And I I think you've done a great job in depicting. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce, are you there? Oh, I'm just waiting for Arena to finish talking. Yeah, that's great. So again, this is like the uh, the third kind of deep conversation we've had today, and it all goes back to music. Definitely is the healing magic, right? I mean, we were just talking to a country artist a minute ago, and you know, with PTSD and all the stuff, and he said his go to is music is the stuff that's got him through the toughest times. Absolutely, it is for me too. Art and music have always been my ways to kind of escape reality. You know, and there's a lot of times even in my paintings, I'll, I'll paint something and as it's drawing, I see things within it, which obviously is probably my subconscious talking to me. Or there's pieces that I've done that weeks later, I'll see something completely different. And I think there's ways, depending on whether you're writing the music yourself or whether you're, you know, listening to music. I think we just kind of capture bits and pieces of ourselves in, in each of those things, whether it's art, music, or anything that someone might enjoy, and I think we're able to relate to people, which is the ultimate goal in life, right, is to be able to have human connection, because I know with anxiety, when I first started having these episodes, all I kept saying was, I want to feel normal, and then, you know, when obviously you talk about it, you you want other people to know that they're not alone, and that's kind of what I was hoping this song would be is to help people know you're not alone and even in the youtube link i think i even gave out my personal information for them to reach out to me you know if they want to talk about it because it's it's a situation where especially with a pandemic we have lost that human connection especially with no concerts you know our next show isn't until may 2021 so i miss you know hugging people and i miss just talking sure It's, it's important it's important to find ways to connect still yeah, and I think awesome. there was like at least one comment be, uh, up below the video saying that they're definitely going to go to this track when they're having an anxiety attack. So yeah, and I know. and that that warms my heart because that's exactly what I was hoping. I mean, of course, I don't want them to have an attack, but <laughs> I'm yeah. hoping to have some kind of release for them. Completely, that's understood. awesome. Yeah. Chris, anything else? I don't know. I really appreciate you taking the time and being so upfront with us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's very. Uh, I can I can tell that you're a true artist, which is really cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I love people who spill their guts and just overshare the way that I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, it's true. It's true. I mean, no one is perfect. I'm far from it. And I think it's important for people to know that it's okay to not feel okay. And it's okay to not be perfect. You know, we're all just trying to get through life. And, you know, I even did a post the other day where, you know, I've, I've lived the first part of my life wishing I was like other artists. And then finally, at one point, I realized my life is completely different from theirs. And you have no idea what it took for that artist to make it. You don't see the behind the scenes. You probably wouldn't want to walk in their shoes. And, you know, it's so important for people, especially up and coming artists to realize, don't try and be someone else, just just be yourself. And, and that's kind of what I try and portray in all of all of my pieces, all of our music. You know, we're very humble people. You know, we, we just love life and we just love doing what we love. And we're just fortunate that the dream that we have is to play music. That's awesome. Right on. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate yes, it. Absolutely, guys. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate the time as well. You have a good day. Have a good day. You too. Have Bye. a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.